As President-elect Obama prepares to meet with President Bush to, today, all eyes are on his early policy proposals that could define the tone of the next four years. Many of the progressive groups that helped mobilize voters and bring Obama into power are beginning to propose concrete suggestions for how the coming administration could initiate the process of change. Members of his transition team said Sunday they are compiling a list of actions that President-elect Obama could take to overturn many of President Bush's executive orders. John Podesta, the head of Obama's transition team, told Fox News that restricting oil and gas drilling and reviewing limits on stem cell research would be among the new priorities. Appearing on CBS News on Sunday, Obama's chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, said aid to the automobile industry and a new economic stimulus plan would also be important. Katrina Vanden Heuvel is editor and publisher of The Nation magazine, which endorsed Obama's candidacy. She has just published an editorial called Obama's 100 Days, outlining some key progressive steps a new administration should take to realize its mandate for change. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Juan. So what should president-elect or President Obama do? Well, what's interesting is that over the last few months, in fact, teams of Obama advisors have been reviewing what they could do and what you could do with a stroke of a pen, but also efforts that will take more coalition building and work inside outsider work over this next period. I think one thing coming off of your report, Amy and Juan, is stop the looting of the American people with this bailouts and stop the bleeding, restructure a bailout for the real economy, real people, uh, extension of unemployment benefits, aid to the cities and states, beleaguered cities and states. And then there are things he's going to do um, supporting the funding of embryonic cell, uh, stem cell research, repealing the global gag rule, ensuring that women around the world have real reproductive rights. There will be a whole series of moves to dismantle the imperial presidency and roll back executive power, which has been such an unfettered behemoth monster in this administration. And then other things like uh, allowing uh, California to move ahead and restrict greenhouse emissions of cars and trucks. So you have high and low war and peace, the economy on the ground, but all things that I think will make a difference uh, if there are, is independent mobilization to build on them in the condition of people's lives, which is so important. Well, but before the 100 days, there are about 80 days in, the, in this transition yeah. period since the election and the issue not only of the appointments that he makes, but also of the statements that he makes about what the Bush administration is doing in its final days. For instance, an Iraq agreement uh, yes, uh, or also the bailout itself. Uh, we just got the report of the AIG increase. Uh, do you think that he should be, in one way or another, making statements to sort of suggest that, because uh, some of these things can't wait? Well, here, I think that he does need to be critical as, and as he begins to frame that he will be dismantling some of these things. But, I mean, I have this book here, uh, FDR, The First Hundred Days. Let's not forget, I mean, the inauguration in 1933 at a very dire, grim moment in our country's history was in March. Between March and June, you had 16 pieces of legislation in this frenzied burst of energy. FDR did not work with Hoover. I don't think Obama should get involved in this transition with Bush. And to that effect, I hope and I think we should be critical if there are appointments we think are counter to some of the moves toward a better economic bailout. Or, for example, there's discussion of keeping on Bill Gates. I mean, I think this is contradictory in many ways to some of the best things Obama said on the uh, campaign trail. For example, negotiating with no preconditions. I thought his statement on Bob Iran. Gates. Robert Gates. Robert Gates, I'm sorry. Maybe he'll bring Maybe Bill he'll Gates bring into Bill the Gates in too, and I don't know. You could have a whole. Um, <laughs> but I think. Um, it's going to be a critical period, but it is important that you see his effort to roll back some of the worst. You heard the woman, uh, Irene Stevenson, the leader of U.S. Uh, uh, Amnesty International, the re renunciation of torture, the uh, shutting down of Guantanamo as a first step, ending the military commissions. These are steps that he can speak to as a way of reengaging the world, because I think we all know there's a moral symbolism in his election. But it's the policies of this country under a Barack Obama administration that will mean very much. What, one of uh, my concerns is I, as I see the names trotted out as, yeah. to put, as potential cabinet members uh, for, an, for a campaign that promised change. There seemed to be a whole lot of Clinton administration uh, people now being suggested as, or raised as possible uh, uh, cabinet appointees. I share your concern. And I want to say something 
Uh, Amy and I were at Planned Parenthood last Friday, and Amy said something which I think is very real, which is we have an establishment consensus in too much of this country. There are people who are part of this ongoing, permanent Republican Democratic administration. I think what is crucial is that Obama leave open the door to people people, the millions who worked their hearts and souls out to get him elected, and that there be, for example, a parallel economic summit, so that you don't just have those who were on the stage last Friday, but you have others who represent teachers, minors, people from poor communities around this country, people who haven't had health care in 10 years. So I think he needs to open up and understand that he, while communicating with those people on the stage, should also be using this great technology to communicate with those who really are going to be the force which overtakes the dead weight of established power and money. Well, what do you make of his first move, which was choosing as his chief of staff, Ron Emanuel? You know, I have less... I'm more concerned about the Treasury Secretary uh, appointments and as he moves forward. The chief, <clears throat> chief of staff uh, can be an empty vessel in many ways, and I think you do see the direction coming from the top down. I think the conventional wisdom on Rahm Emanuel is very silly. The idea that he's too partisan, and that's violating Obama's post-partisan message. I think we're going to see a lot of talk <clears throat> about pragmatism and post-partisanship. That's fine. But I think you may see progressive solutions coming out of that. Not as bold as we would like. That's where mobilization comes in. But I'm less concerned about Rahm Emanuel. I think this party the leadership of the Democratic Party has been moved on trade issues, for example, because of the mobilization of those outside it. And one of the steps Obama, as I said in my first 100 days, he should repudiate the Korea-Panama trade treaties and make sure that the trade treaties are truly integrated with labor, human rights, environmental rights, the Columbia-Korea-Panama trade agreements. And, Amy, one of the first steps, and this speaks to both a decision of this administration and perhaps reflected in the appointments he makes, the Employee Free Choice Act. I think that is crucial. Labor has gone all out for Barack Obama, and the uh, mobilization of the corporate business community is ferocious. I mean, within the weeks before Obama was elected, they saw the writing on the wall and the money being amassed already. So that's a fight Explain that needs to be that is. the Employee Free Choice Act. It's a, it's a piece of legislation Labor has been fighting for for many years that will allow card checks so that management could not harass labor in their organizing drives. And it would help labor begin, only begin to level the playing field. What is the private sector is now eight or nine percent uh, unionized and uh, government public sector 12 percent. So that is a key demand, along with health insurance so that people in labor are going to continue with what they call an accountability movement in this next 100 days, which is useful, because parallel to what Obama's saying he will do, you need that accountability. But, uh, but in the, uh, the card check provision, the problem is that even if that was able to get through Congress, the issue, uh, and unions see it as a way to expand membership rapidly, but the problem is that in many places now, even after you get a union recognized, getting a contract is a whole other issue. So that yeah. there needs to be a lot more reform of the NLRB than just the car check issue. You know, I, I agree, Juan, and I think what we've seen, we've seen this country ravaged over the last eight years, and also the Democrats under Clinton. And this is part of what we're seeing, by the way, with the Clinton people coming back into this administration. The conventional wisdom on the Clinton administration is that it was brightness and light. There were some good things done, but we know what was squandered, what was lost. But it's the last Democratic administration, so we haven't built the field team we need on our side, except outside, which is valuable. There'll be some people inside, but that insider-outsider strategy, it's a first step. That's my point, the Employee Free Choice Act. Damage has been done. We are now beginning to undo the damage. And of course, it, NLRB changes, many more changes. However, the car check, uh, EFCA, as they call it, does give arbitration rights, which is also valuable.